Okay, so we want to welcome everybody to It's Worth a Shot um, on November 8th today. Um, if you are not aware, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, so we do have some information coming to you on this topic for this It's Worth a Shot. Next slide, please. Um, as always, we just want to let you know of a disclaimer that we do have um, outside presenters who come in and present for us. And so um, just to cover all of our bases, that does not mean that we endorse or recommend anything by, from Mountain Pacific, but you know, we do appreciate people that do join us and present on our behalf. To the group, next slide, please. Okay, so hopefully this all moves for you guys. I don't know if you remember when um, Lori did a presentation for Infection Prevention Week, and that's her dancing in her <laughs> poop costume. We thought you guys would all get a kick out of that. But we also wanted to let you know that November is also CDIP Awareness Month. So CDC, CDC has put out quite a bit of, a bit of information. Um, so if you wanna click the source there, you can look at information that's coming up and how to raise awareness and just different resources for facilities. Next slide, please. And it is also um, Antibiotic Awareness Week, November 18th to the 24th. And again, we have some resources for people to look at and hopefully learn from. Next slide, please. And as always, we do appreciate any ideas for topics from um, our participants. So let us know if you have any, and we really appreciate you joining us every Wednesday. And right now we do have a poll. So if I can get Mary to pull that up for us. So National Pneumonia Day is November 12th. We just wanted to know, are your facilities offering immunization to your residents? Now this is the pneumonia um, series that are immunization that we're talking about. So we've got a couple of respondents. Everybody's yes so far. So that's good to see. Just give it a couple more seconds. Looks like the voting has kind of uh, tapered off. So we'll go ahead and end the poll there, Mary. And everybody who responded said yes. So that's always good. We like to see that. If we go to the next slide, Mary. So as we always have, we did add the influenza snapshot back into our snapshots in the beginning of our web series. Uh, just because we are in the season. And as you can see, we're kind of varied over our states. Alaska has definitely seen an increase, but we've got our other states, um, Hawaii, Montana, and Wyoming seem to be in the low to mo moderate, so are minimal. So that's always great. I can go to the next slide. And for our COVID snapshots. So again, if you look at our terrain, we are quite, quite all over the place, but it looks like, again, in Alaska, we're having moderate stable, moderate, and substantial increase. And then we have other places that are substantial decreases, like in Montana, which is great. In Wyoming, we can see some sections. So we do see that across the trend for deaths is uh, no change, which is always good. We don't like to see those go up, but most of the other trends are trending down. So that's always good to see as well. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna hand it over to Jennifer Chikoyak. If you guys have been um, longtime participants, you'll know that she was on previously to present for us. She was with the American Lung Association in Alaska, and I will turn it over to Jen. Great, thanks so much, um, and thanks for having me back. I brought some new friends with me today. Um, Co-presenting with me is Lori uh, Price with the State of Alaska's Tobacco Prevention and Control Program, and then also Crystal Mead from the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium. Um, thank you so much for having us back. Next slide. So November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And for me, um, it's, it's really personal. I um, have been working in public health for the last 20 years. And um, it all started because I lost my grandma to lung cancer when I was uh, a teenager. And so I do all of this work in memory of her so that nobody else has to lose their grandma. So um, yeah, so today we're gonna talk about lung cancer and what's happening at sort of, I'm gonna do the, the lung cancer 101 part and talk a little bit about some of the national trends that we're seeing. Crystal's going to talk um, about what's happening here in Alaska and then Lori's going to um, finish up for us um, talking about some of the resources and how you can help the residents um, that you're working with. Next slide, please. 
So let's start with what cancer is um, and really start at the beginning. Uh, so normal cells in the lungs and other parts of the body grow and divide to form new cells as they are needed. When normal cells grow old or get damaged, they die and new cells take their place. Sometimes this process goes wrong. New cells form in the body when it doesn't need them and old or damaged cells don't die as they should. Cancer occurs when cells are damaged and mutate. And mutate. This causes them to grow and multiply uncontrollably. These cells clump together and form a tumor, a tumor. So you might ask what causes the cells to mutate? Causes include exposure to hazardous chemicals like those in cigarette smoke, radon, genetics, and sometimes we don't know what causes them to mute, what causes those cells to mutate. Next slide, please. Lung cancer is defined as a cancer that begins in the lungs. Depending on how far along it is when diagnosed, it may have spread to the lymph nodes and surrounding tissues or even other parts of the body. For lung cancer, the major, major site of metastases include the adrenal glands, bone, brain, liver, or the other lung. You can see on the left side, it's that nice, um, healthy pink lung with the healthy lymph nodes. And then on the right side is the damaged lung. The, there in the little white circle is the primary tumor and the lymph nodes have been damaged as well in this image. Next slide, please. So there are two types of lung cancer. Um, uh, non-small cell and then small cell lung cancer. Smoking can be the cause of both types of lung cancer, but it's very rare for someone who's never smoked to have small cell lung cancer. Each subtype of lung cancer is different, but they're grouped together because they're treated similarly. So the cells in the small lung um, cell <laughs> lung cancer, um, they look small under the microscope seems pretty obvious. And about one in every eight people with lung cancer has a small cell lung cancer. The non-small cell lung cancer is more common form of lung cancer. The cells look larger um, than the small cell lung cancer. And most, about seven of every eight people diagnosed with lung cancer have non-small cell lung cancer. It doesn't grow and spread as fast as small cell lung cancer and it's treated differently. Next slide. So some of the causes of lung cancer include um, smoking. Um, it accounts for close to 90% of all lung cancer deaths. Radon exposure is the second leading cause and the first among people who have never smoked. And radon is a, a um, odorless gas uh, that's found in um, surfaces, um, often exposed in houses. Um, other causes include secondhand smoke, occupational exposure, air pollution, asbestos, uh, asbestos and gen genetic predispositions. It's not always pos possible to identify a specific cause of lung cancer in all patients. Next, next slide, please. So some of the lung symptoms um, for lung cancer are usually don't show up until late, later stages. Um, there are very few nerve endings in the lungs. A tumor could be in the lungs without causing pain or discomfort. When symptoms are present, they are different in each person, but may include pulmonary issues like chronic cough, shortness of breath, or horse, hoarseness. Some of the symptoms for lung cancer may seem related, not, seem related to lungs or breathing. These symptoms can still be a sign of lung cancer because lung cancer usually doesn't cause symptoms in early stages of the disease. This means some symptoms do not appear until the cancer has spread to other parts of the body. Some of these symptoms include headaches and bone pain and loss of appetite. Next slide, please. So now we're going to talk about some of the burdens of lung cancer and some of the national data. Next slide. I know these graphs are a little small and I apologize. Wanted to share a lot of information um, in a little bit, of, little bit of space I had. Um, the incident is the number of new cases diagnosed. 
this has been in surveillance surveillance for this began in 1975. Lung cancer incident rates have decreased by about 25% among men, but doubled among women. Three quarters of lung cancer disease in 2021 occurred among those ages 65 years of age and older, and 96% among those ages 55 um, years of age and older. Death rates were greater among men than women for all race and ethnic groups. Death rates between 2016 and 2020 were highest among black males, followed by white males and American Indian Alaska Native male populations. Death rates were much lower among the Asian Pacific Islander males and lowest among Latino males. Next slide, please. So, more people die from lung cancer than prostate, breast, and colorectal cancer combined, making it the leading cause of cancer in America. It's also the number one cancer in Alaska. So now I'm going to turn things over to my friend Crystal Mead from ANTHC. Hi, can everybody hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, yes okay. we sure can. Okay, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Crystal Mean and I work for the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium here in Anchorage, Alaska. I'm the program manager for the Tobacco Prevention Program. Um, I've been with the org a little over 18 years and I've been managing the program for about six years. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit today about um, lung cancer screening in Alaska. Next slide, please. So um, the Alaska Native Medical Center is on the Alaska Native Health Campus where I work, falls under ANTHC. We do have a lung cancer screening program um, that is run out of our pulmonology clinic. And so for patients, uh, beneficiaries of the Alaska Native Medical Center, for them to be seen for lung cancer screening, um, they must meet the guidelines for screening, you know, the national guidelines. Um, and it does take place within our pulmonology clinic. So if the patient um, wants to get screened, they're able to talk to either their primary care provider or a specialty provider, like a cardiologist, even a pulmonologist, um, to get that appointment set up. For patients that are in the Anchorage area, um, it is a little bit easier to coordinate the care um, because oftentimes, you know, patients can drive in or, you know, um, coordinate it with other appointments. If they do, um, if they for, are from out of town, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide, um, it gets a little more complicated, but we just try to coordinate um, appointments together. But for anchored area patients, they can just call, get it scheduled, um, and that's pretty simple. Next slide, please. So for some of the regional clinics in Alaska, so outside of Anchorage, um, What's offered for lung cancer screening varies by the site. And so one example that I have is so Norton Sound Health Corporation, they're located in Nome, Alaska. They have a pretty comprehensive program such as ANMC, um, where, you know, the patient can call and as long as they meet the guidelines, they should be able to get in for a screening. If they're from outside of Nome in an outlying community, what they will try to do is coordinate multiple appointments and have that patient come in and do the lung cancer screening as part of that. So they might come in for like dental work and then also get a lung cancer screening appointment. Um, so they really try to coordinate the care so that way the patient isn't having to just come in for this. And what we're finding with um, a lot of our regional health partners is that they have the equipment. So the low dose computed um, tomographies equipment, but they don't necessarily have a lung cancer screening program. So it's usually set up, the screening is usually set up by having a conversation with your primary care physician. Um, and then it's done through radiology and then any follow-up results also go through primary care physician. Next slide. And so I just put this slide as like future opportunities. Um, it would be great if more of our tribal health organizations could have a formal lung cancer screening program. 
I think that a big part of the screening process that people um, like kind of makes hesitancy to get screening is that they hear the word screening and they automatically think like, you know, they think like a colonoscopy where you have like this major prep or they think mammogram where it can be really uncomfortable. But with lung cancer screening, it's really non-invasive. It's really quick. And so I think having that education part um, is really, really important. Um, and, you know, to increase screenings. And then obviously having more of our tribal health partners be able to offer those low dose scans. And then just more collaboration with um, screening programs with tobacco treatment specialists or tobacco cessation programs. So, um, you know, here at AMC, we do have a pretty good relationship with our pulmonology department. They refer patients to us often, but that's not always the case with our tribal health partners. So I just think it's a really good opportunity for, you know, people who are doing the screening and people that are doing the cessation work to collaborate a little bit more. Um, that was all that I had. Thanks. All right, so uh, to introduce myself, I am Lori Price with the uh, State of Alaska Tobacco Prevention and Control Program, uh, TPC for short. Um, excited to talk to you guys today. And I uh, focus on nicotine addiction and behavioral health and cessation. Uh, kind of, I consider myself more of the adult side of, um, of uh, cessation. And um, I've been with the program for tobacco for about three years and working in uh, public health for about five. And this is also, um, it's one thing I uh, realized with tobacco is um, it's really fascinating to hear all the stories of how people get into this uh, line of work, um, especially healthcare. And um, it's near and dear to my heart. My mother-in-law is in stage four COPD. So I see the effects of not only personal, um, but also how it uh, ripples into the family. Um, so this is, uh, um, I'm really excited to be able to share a little bit about what we have in Alaska. Um, and so today I'm talking about the Alaska's tobacco quit line. Uh, what's really amazing is there are uh, quit line services that are all throughout the country, which will be shared a little bit later. Um, but we're very fortunate in our state to have this quit line. It is a free service. Um, if you go ahead, next slide, please. So there are a lot of different ways to be able to reach the Alaska Tobacco Quit Line. Um, the great thing is this is 24 seven. So no matter when somebody needs to be able to call the quit line um, and whether it's uh, somebody that wants to call, wants to sign up online, um, they want to text. Um, there's a lot of different ways. And we also have a provider referral. And the definition of provider, that's really anybody that wants to refer. So if you have patients that uh, or clients, depending on the um, your setting, um, that uh, has, um, you know, maybe they smoke, maybe they chew, maybe they're, you know, depending on what tobacco products, there's different ways that you can refer. Um, also, if you have somebody that is uh, maybe you yourself have friends, family that uh, use um, tobacco uh, products, um, you can also learn about um, tobacco as far as how to support somebody that um, that is ready to quit on their journey. So it um, doesn't mean if you having to refer somebody over, but there's a lot of resources to be able to um, uh, learn more. Um, so just to share really quickly about the tobacco quit line, um, we know that evidence shows that combining quit coaching and nicotine replacement therapy, um, also known as NRT, increases the chances of quitting for good. Um, and we have uh, staff that within the quit line um, are uh, really great at getting to understand um, the patient and um, uh, being able to understand the journey and see what fits best for the patient um, for NRT resources, et cetera. Um, next uh, slide, please. So with the Alaska Tobacco Quit Line, um, we have some really amazing tailored programs. Uh, one of them is our free enhanced uh, behavioral health program. And this includes unlimited phone support, um, which really awesome is it, they coordinate treatment with the behavioral health care team. 
And um, there's a lot of really great resources, uh, additional stress management, and then uh, additional NRT. And NRT is definitely something that um, a lot of patients, um, the reason for calling the quit line is to be able to have that as a resource. Um, and there are different types of NRT that are within the quit line. Um, but I know that depending on what state you're in, uh, depends on um, if NRT is part of that um, uh, pa uh, package. Um, but with a uh, Alaska tobacco quit line, it is available. Um, also, we do have a tailored program for people that are uh, planning to become pregnant, pregnant and or breastfeeding. Um, and this is something that allows additional coaching calls before, during and after pregnancy. Um, they work with the healthcare team and then also have a specialized team of coaches. Um, I'll say that before I started working for the state um, and before I actually moved to Alaska, um, I didn't realize the resources that each state has and, um, and being able to have these tailored programs be offered. Uh, there's a lot of really great tailored programs uh, through different quit lines throughout the um, the country. So definitely get to know what your state has. Um, and there's a lot of other amazing resources that are available too. Uh, next slide, please. So if, uh, if an individual does call the, uh, or goes online for the quit line, um, there, there's a lot of different things that I know a lot of patients want to know what is my journey going to look like? What does it what does it entail? And so um, this is just a snapshot of kind of what it looks like for the individual. Um, obviously, it shows different ways they can enroll, um, what type of pre uh, uh, programs we have. We also do have for youth and um, our standard quitline services. Um, but basically, they um, whether they call, they text um, or they go online. Um, they basically collect information and data, and so that way, if they apply to one of these behavioral health programs or whatever type of program we have, um, what fits best for them. And then there may be some people who say, yeah, I really am not interested in um, doing uh, having NRT, but I want to have you know the resources or I want to be able to talk to a quick coach. And so um, there's a lot of... Uh, different um, parts to the quit line that um, can see what is best for the patient. And so uh, being able to go online, see what that's about, talk to a quick coach. And um, the really great thing is nowadays they have um, a lot of different resources available that they can send inspirational quotes, fact sheets, um, a lot of different things that they can send to a patient. And maybe somebody's not tech savvy, especially if you have somebody that's or, um, maybe that's, um, you know, they don't want to have anything to do with computer or phone, uh, being able to just call and physically talk or uh, actually call somebody over the phone. So it's what's best for the patient. Um, next slide, please. So there are a lot of different resources we have available um, through the quit line, through our state office. Um, on the, um, whether it's, you know, learning how to, uh, maybe it's an individual that smokes, maybe figuring out how to, um, instead of having that cup of coffee with a cigarette, learning to, um, you know, restructure the day. And so that they're not using tobacco, um, maybe it's uh, information on how to support that individual um, and helping them quit. Um, there's also trainings we have available for staff. So if you're looking to what we call brief intervention, so you can help support staff with resources. Um, some people love visual aids. And so they want to know how am I going to, um, if I stop smoking today, um, you know, what does that do for my heart? What does that do for my health? So there's a lot of different things that you can share um, that are free resources. This is just a few of uh, what are available, but um, there's, uh, I, one thing I really love about Alaska between, um, Jen with ALA and, or American Lung, Crystal with ANTHC, um, we have, um, Alaska is so vast with all the different communities and knowing what you have available in your community, but also, um, what national resources are available and being able to provide all of that for your patients or staff 
also maybe colleagues. Um, and then that way they can figure out what's best for them to be able to get the information um, that they need. So, um, and that's that's about what I've got. Thank you, Lori. Um, if we can go to the next slide. We do realize that this presentation was very Alaska heavy and um, we really wanna thank our partners for uh, you know joining us and giving the, the presentation. And we're always more than welcome to make contact with other partners and other states to give the presentation. But we did wanna represent some of the other areas in our region that we represent. So um, on this slide, you'll see that there's some Guam resources, um, especially through the Department of Public Health and Social Services. They have a tobacco sensation quit line. Um, they also have Tobacco Free, Free Guam, which they have um, educational print and video materials. And they also have smoking sensation classes with Take Care, Stop Smoking. We can go to the next slide. Hawaii, there are also quite a few resources, just like we were talking earlier. Um, there's a tobacco quit line. They have an Asian smokers quit line where you can um, have counseling in your um, native language, which always makes it great. And then of course, there's a Lung Association of Hawaii, just like we have the Lung Association of Alaska up here. And then the Hawaii Chronic um, Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Coalition and a couple others there. Let's go to the next slide. And then for Montana, same thing through the state, uh, their official state website, they have some health coaching. They also have a tobacco quit line. Um, they have freedom for smoking program and also Montana tobacco, tobacco use prevention. Next slide. And then we've got Wyoming with the Wyoming Quit Now program. And then they have substance use and tobacco prevention programs. So they kind of put both the programs in together. If we go to the next slide. Now, these are additional resources from the ladies that presented today. Um, did you guys want to add anything about these resources? Nope. Okay, we're good. Oh, Let's go. To the sorry. Okay. I just can I jump in real quick? I was sure just can. typing this into the chat and just saying um, you mentioned freedom from smoking in the Montana. Um, list of resources. Freedom from smoking is an American Lung Association. Um, uh, program. And so that's available anywhere. And so if that's something you're interested, you can find more information on lung.org or feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to make connections. Great. Can we go to the next slide, Mary? So do we have any questions or any comments that people have for the presentation today or our presenters? Quiet group on the snowy Monday or Wednesday. Okay. Can we go to the next slide? Again, we want to thank everybody for their participation um, and joining us every Wednesday. Uh, let's see, I can't remember off the top of my head. This was our 93rd, it's worth a shot. So kudos to all you guys for showing up weekly to give us an audience to present to. Um, next week, we will have malnutrition part two um, with Darcy Ho. I believe she presented back in the spring. So we'd really appreciate for you guys to join us for that. And then there is our, um, it's not called a survey. What is it called? Evaluation. If you guys can fill out the evaluation that's in the chat, we really appreciate it. We do take your guys' comments seriously and we review them every week. So if you have any other topics to share, you can also share it in the evaluation. So again, thank you so much to our presenters and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. Have a good week. <laughs>